The Toronto Blue Jays are closing in on a deal with Don Mattingly to be their new bench coach, and the Jays are once again linked to Lars Newtbar of the Cardinals. So we'll break down that and much more on Jays Digest. Johnny Baseball is coming home. But first, we want to thank you all for the support that we've been getting. It's been unreal. Yeah, it's been unbelievable. Quick reminder, 82.4% of you guys who are watching are not subscribed. So if you enjoy Daily Jays content and seeing Peter do stuff like that, make sure you hit the subscribe button. It means the world. But let's just get right into the topic of what you just said. Donnie Baseball is coming home. He is coming to Toronto. Don Mattingly is hired, according to a bunch of sources. Twitter kind of blew up today. And this is a pretty big deal. Uh, Peter's going to break down a reason that we hired him that maybe you guys, you know, haven't really noticed or pointed out. But I'll pop up the screenshot here now. Don Mattingly and the Blue Jays are closing in on a deal to make him the club's new bench coach per source. Joel Sherman was on it. And uh, I'll just get your initial thoughts on that before I pop up the tweet by Ben Nicholson-Smith. I love this. I really love this hire. Uh, I really think it's going to be great for our young guys having a former MVP in their ears, having a, a guy that's won batting titles, a guy that's won nine gold gloves, a guy's just the ultimate pro. He was a captain of the Yankees. He spent his entire playing career with the Yankees, and it's just, I mean, what more could you want from a bench coach? Uh, John Schneider was our old bench coach. It was great. He, he really had the guys' his ears, but I mean, the guy the guy didn't have the major league career that Don Mattingly did, and Don Mattingly he's got the pedigree, he's a winning coach, and I really think this could help one of our young players. But I'll get into that uh, after your thoughts, Nick. Yeah, I loved it. I saw it today. I was out and I was just pumped when I saw it. And obviously, he was. I'm sure he was sought after by many other teams, whether that be you know head coaching role or head manager or you know bench coach. And for us. The Jays to get him? I was shocked, personally. But we'll pop up this tweet here by Ben Nicholson-Smith. And he said, Once John Schneider was hired, Question became how to best support him and his players. Within the Blue Jays organization, there was thought that an experienced coach with uh, gravitas would benefit Jays behind the scenes and ultimately on the field. A sentiment that some rival uh, teams echoed, too. So, obviously, there was competition for him. I definitely butchered the pronunciation of the gravitas, but that's all right. Um, yeah, huge very important that we got him and i'm shocked we got him compared to other teams we seem to maybe outbid i don't know how that really works but don's excited to come to a, a young team and he was on a podcast and he spoke about it and not necessarily the jays he didn't specify the jays in the podcast this was earlier yeah. today before the report dropped but he seems pumped yeah okay i'm gonna throw out a basketball reference here tell me if this makes sense for you nick so when the raptors got Kawhi leonard I don't know if any of you are basketball fans in the comments, but let us know what you think of this. When the Raptors got Kawhi Leonard, they hired Phil Handy as an assistant coach. And that uh, Phil Handy is known all around the NBA as one of the greatest developers, one of the greatest uh, player development coaches in general. And that kind of, I'm not saying it directly correlated with the Raptors winning a title in 2019, but that had to have had a huge impact on the on the roster just on the young players in general. So I feel like Don Mattingly can have that similar type of uh, type of impact. And on one guy specifically, Bo Bichette, Um I'll tell you why right now. When Don Mattingly got his first coaching gig in the MLB, it was with the Yankees from 2004 to 2007 under Joe Torre, who's one of the greatest managers of all time, one of the winningest managers of all time. And in that time... From 2004 to 2007, a four-season period, Derek Jeter, the Yankees captain, the Yankees shortstop, won his first three gold gloves at shortstop. So I'm wondering if this can uh, translate to Bo Bichette. Can Don Manningly make Bo Bichette into a gold glove caliber shortstop? Who knows? Yeah, maybe that's what the Blue Jays are thinking. And the Raptors reference is a good one. Having a veteran behind John Schneider, a guy who's coached in the MLB forever, it seems like a really long time, and played himself as well in the MLB, it's it seems it's very important, especially because most of our team is young players. Yep. I have another you know seasoned veteran. I'll pop up uh, Don's stats here. If you can, this is his managerial career. Um, he finished with an 889 and 950 record. However, if you look at his time with the Dodgers, he was a very very solid manager, uh, well respected around the league, and he was honestly well respected with the Marlins as well. They just obviously never had a good team um he notably in 2020 you know led him to a pretty good record despite their talent not really being there during the covid shortened year but 
I don't know. He's uh, I'm super excited. We got him as a bench coach. Um, I believe it. It's basically confirmed. It should be confirmed over the next couple of days. But I'm just, I'm over the moon about something. Maybe it's just because I've yeah. been looking for information, and uh, and we love Donny Baseball, like you said in the intro. But it's yeah, uh, it's huge. I'm wondering if Donny Baseball could still suit up and uh, and hit a little bit in our lineup. But we yeah. need a left-handed bat. Donny Baseball, get in there, baby. He, uh, I would love to see him there. And <laughs> uh, like you said, an underrated thing about this is the potential he could have on the young players, especially their feeling and defense. Yeah. And on the podcast, he was speaking about how he has a lot of skills he can use and a lot of advice he can give. And this was when he knew he was coming to the Blue Jays. So maybe he sees something that uh, you know the former Dave Hud- Hudgens or whoever used to be our bench coach uh, didn't. It's going to be very interesting, and uh, I'm excited for it. It's, and, it's crazy. Yeah, another thing that I'd like to add is the impact that former players, former elite players have had on this young Blue Jays uh, roster. So um, I know not a very popular guy, but I'll throw out Dante Bichette there. When he was with the Blue Jays in 2020, in that COVID-shortened year, he really had an impact on how they, they went about things. He he was kind of like, not really a bench coach, but like kind of a player consultant. Yeah. Uh, and he really helped those young guys hone into their skills. Obviously, Bo Bichette was a hitter ever since he got to the major leagues. But Teoscar Hernandez, a guy who was an outfielder like, Don, uh, like, uh, like Dante Bichette was, he ended up winning his first silver slugger that season. So, I mean, it could have a direct correlation to these players maybe to the young guys like Vladdy, like Bo Bichette, and maybe even to a certain extent, Alec Manoa, Alejandro Kirk, Gabby Moreno. Who knows? I mean, it could be huge for these guys. Yeah, we might be looking back at this next time uh, or this time next year and be talking about the impact that it did have. And bench coaches, and I feel like they get undervalued a little bit. Obviously, we don't talk about them all the time, but the impact they have off the field and throughout the summer and stuff is uh, it's very, very important. Almost as important as a manager, I would say. Um, obviously besides the in-game decisions, but Donnie's going to be able to help John Snyder with that as well, which is going to be huge, but exactly. let's get, yeah, let's get into the next topic. Now we'll, uh, we'll be quiet about Donnie baseball for, for the time being, but <laughs> this is a pretty, pretty big report. The Cardinals and Blue Jays likely trade partners. So obviously we've talked about, uh, the catchers and us trading for Lars Newper. A lot of Cardinals fans in the comments, if you're here now, welcome, but you guys are very defensive of Lars Newper and we were very defensive. Alejandro Kirk, John Morrissey went on, um, Twitter today and tweeted, I wouldn't be surprised at all if we see something like Jansen for Newper come to fruition during the winter meetings. The MLB Network tweeted it, and this stemmed from he was on a uh, like a show, I guess. I'll play it right now for you guys to listen to. I won't even explain it. Of the athletics, she had a really good point about how potentially a Jansen and Cardinals deal could come together when you consider the Cardinals' depth of, of young outfielders. Of course, Toronto moved Teoscar to the Seattle Mariners. There's now a spot for potentially a lefty bat in, in the outfield in Toronto now. And Katie made the point, Danny Jansen for Lars Newtbar is a really good fit. You would say on both sides. You may have some issues. So as you can see, Peter, you looked a bit like Danny Jansen there for a while. <laughs> yeah, that was uh, uncomfortably long. Uh, I tried holding in my laughter there. I did. I blended into Danny Jansen's face over there. But let's not... Um, not straight away from the clip here he's talking talking about new bar in a jay's uniform and i'd love to see that yeah it's becoming more and more likely we're hearing more and more rumors about it and morrissey came out and said basically they're seeming like likely partners at this point and the cardinals are interested in danny jansen are seemingly interested and man if it all it takes if danny jansen and a prospect for lars new bar, then i would uh i would love to do that i'm high on lars new bar, and if you know if the Jays don't think they can get Brandon Nimmo, Lars Newtbar would probably be the next best option, followed by Cody Bellinger, depending how you evaluate all that. But, man, this would be a, a huge deal. Yeah, absolutely. And the Cardinals, they have a lot of outfield depth. They they have Carlson. They have Lars Newtbar. Now it's just it's just the case of whether they want to keep one of the two. I mean, they I don't know if they can keep both. But I would love, love, love Lars Newtbar in a Jays uniform, especially if it just takes Danny Jansen. I don't know if I would do it for Kirk, though, just because of the years of control that Kirk has left. It's a lot more valuable than Jansen. But Cardinals are trying to win right now. They have uh, Nolan Arnato, who's in his 30s. Uh, Paul Goldschmidt was in his mid-30s. So they don't mind taking on a catcher with two years of control in Danny Jansen. And, uh, and a guy who's as talented as him as Colin Games. And power hitter, Danny Jensen's the full package. 
that you would want from a catcher. And I think it makes sense for both teams. Will the Cardinals do it straight up Danny Jansen for Newt Bar? I don't know, but it would definitely consider because they have a huge hole at catcher. Yeah, if they do it one for one, we take it. I think we take it in a heartbeat just because of our you know surplus of catchers. Yeah. And I think for the Cardinals, they'd probably want maybe a prospect, maybe a uh, Yos Verzu Alita type or someone like that. But if we uh, if we end up trading for him or for more rumors surface, we'll uh, we'll touch back on him. But just an updated report on that. I know we've had a couple videos covering it, but let's just get into the last you know quick topic of the video, which is very short, but it is some schedule news. So some schedule news dropped uh, yesterday, as of the time of recording, and. You can pop this up here. I'll pop it up now. This is the 2023 schedule. Blue Jays start times for home games next season are again 7.07 Eastern on weekdays, 3.07 on Saturdays, and 1.37 on Sundays. And you can kind of have a look at the uh, the early schedule there. And starting off with Detroit at home and opening up well, with Tampa as well uh, at home. So what are your thoughts on the schedule? Do you have any uh, – uh, there are some rumors going around that the times were going to change and that we were going to have, like I think, I don't know what time it was, but earlier start times, but that didn't happen. The changes stay the same, and I'm excited for the Rogers Center renovations. But what are your uh, any initial thoughts on the schedule as I pop it back up? Oh, I'm really excited for that too, and and I think this really bodes well for free agents. I I think they look at the renovations and say this is a place where I want to play. This is a place where I want to spend the rest of my career. They also look at the addition of Don Mattingly and say, wow, this guy could really help me get a big contract in free agency. So let's say a guy who is going to hit free agency soon takes a gamble with the Blue Jays, like. I like Cody Bellinger. Maybe he says, hey, on Donnie Baseball can really help out my baseball career here and help me get paid in free agency. So I, I like all the moves that the Jays are making. I'm excited for the schedule, and I'm excited for a lot more interleague play as well. There's going to be less games within your division. So I think the Jays can have a realistic shot at getting 100-plus wins this year. Yeah, I think that's the goal. We have a, It's going to be an interesting year in the MLB. But obviously, the shift change, the pitching – a timer we have the rogers center renovations it's it's going to be exciting and this is just the beginning as we uh, approach opening right. day which is a few months away and uh, we'll be here with you every single day up until opening day and then past that sports been unbelievable hope you enjoyed the video it was a fun one to make and the sports been unreal and we'll uh we'll see you guys in tomorrow's video thanks